Bill Allen with Evolve Lab, and today I wanted to show you how to rename families using Dynamo. So what are some applications of when you might want to rename families within your project or in your template using Dynamo? One might be, say, a CSI prefix. Do you want to assign all the divisions, say, concrete, division three, finishes 09? Another one might be your firm name as a suffix, like an acronym at the end of your family, so that way you know those families came from your firm. And then maybe another example might be versioning. Say the family was built in 2019, 2020, etc. Those are some examples I can think of. I'm sure you guys have plenty of other examples applicable to your situation. Regardless, I hope this tutorial really helps you. Okay, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we have built out this post as a blog a few years ago. And if you wanted to just download the script, you can go to evolvebim.com forward slash blog and search for the blog post there and then you can download the script directly from the website. However, if you're interested in learning Dynamo and actually want to know how to do this process for yourself, keep watching. Okay, now that we're in Dynamo, we're going to start building our script. Now, I have to mention, before we go any further, make sure that you have the Clockwork package installed because we will be using some nodes to, in fact, from that package later on in the example. So if you haven't yet, make sure you go to Package tab, search for Package, and basically packages are, think of like Revit add-ins. For Revit, they're like add-ins for Dynamo. We have one, our Evolve Lab package and Beaker, and other people have contributed to the Dynamo community by building their own open source packages as well. One of those being the Clockwork package. So if you do a search for Clockwork, you wanna make sure you're downloading the Clockwork package for Dynamo 2.3. So you go ahead and download that. All right, and that should be visible now over on the side. You might have to close Dynamo and reopen for it to become active, but it should be available now. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to start grabbing the data that's in our Revit model. And to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab information from all elements of type. All right, and then it's looking for the element type node. So in here, we can plug these in and the type that we're going to be looking for is the type of family, okay? Now, don't think of family types. Some of these uh, languages get a little mixed with, like, Revit terminology. Um, this is simply almost like a category, if you will, within our, our project. So we're grabbing categories of family versus, say, like, ceiling or something like that. All right. So now that I have this information, um, I could drop in a watch node if I wanted to, and I could start to actually see that I'm already starting to pull information from my model. Now, the thing is, I don't want all the information. I actually want to parse the data. I only want the, the families with the underscore EL in them, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the filter Boolean mask. So you can either do a right click on the canvas here and do a search, or you can search up here. Two ways to get to that, right? So we'll do filter by Boolean mask, and I can plug my list in here. And then now I need to start filtering by some um, kind of rules. And so what I want to do is I'm going to filter by the string contains. So if I say string contains, I can plug that in, and you can see it's not happy, it's yellow, right? This is because I have automatic being run, and so it's already starting to look for how I'm starting to filter that information. And what I can do is I can drop either in a um, string node like this, but I just, I find I have, I have better luck with using code blocks uh, when using textual information. So I'm actually going to just drop in a code block. You can also do a double click on the canvas uh, to initiate a code block. Little, little tip there. All right, so now I can search for um, underscore EL, semicolon. And the other thing to note is right now, this is looking for a string. And this is being said uh, fed a series of elements or objects. And so what I need to do is I need to convert those objects to a string. So I'm going to use the object string from object node. I can plug that in there and this in here. Now you can see that Boolean mask is happy. It's no longer yellow. And if I actually drop in another watch node, you can see that I can see all the information that is in my in category as well as my out category. So Here's all the families that contain underscore EL, and these are all the ones that do not. So this is a way that we start parsing that data out. All right. Now, this is where we start utilizing some of the clockwork packages. So make sure that you have that clockwork package installed. 
the package that we're, or the node we're going to use is element.name. And what this is going to do is it's going to grab all of the names of the families that we have. And this is going to be important later for renaming it. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to replace the information, the, uh, the names that are in here. Okay. And so what we're going to use is we're going to use the uh, string replace node. Now I'll hook that up. And then what am I searching for? Well, I'm searching for all the families that have that underscore EL and replacing them with uh, another name, right? So how am, I, how am I replacing the string? So I could, if I wanted to, um, drop in a new code block, but look, I can also just recycle this one and say, search for that underscore EL. And then I could just copy paste this code block and maybe my firm's name's alphabet architecture or whatever, right? I could do underscore a b and plug that in and then you can see i could do another watch node but i could also pin this guy and you can see that all those underscore el families now have an underscore a b all right now this is happening in the dynamo environment but we haven't yet pushed this information over to revit yet now before i go any further what i want to do is actually i must switch this to manual because i want to be a little intentional about the timing of when i push this data so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in that element set name from the clockwork package. And it has to be all element dot set name. All right. So now I'm going to feed the data into that element set name. And what I want to do now is I want to replace the information, the data, the text, right? This underscore AB, I want to rename these families, okay? So I'm going to hook that up. And what I can do is I can put in a watch node for this. And see which ones are successful and which ones are not. Now, this is where it gets really exciting. I'm going to just pair my window over the side here. Okay, so now that I have my window paired, you can see that I have I still have all my families with the underscore EL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the run button and it's going to update instantly. And by instantly, I mean 45 seconds to a minute. All right, so now we have success. Look at this, we have elements that are true and it's showing all the families that it renamed. And you can also see in my project, anywhere there was an underscore EL is now an underscore AB. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to rename families with Dynamo. If you did, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so that way you can get notified of future videos that we post. Hope that's helpful and enjoy the rest of your day. See you guys.